And this is um, part two of my guided tour of the um, Good Vang and the Village um, for, for my mum. And that, there's a better view of all the farmhouses there, of course. And then see where they're working, the diggers and all the piles of stone. That's, I believe it's the farmers that have undertaken to take on that job, which is to have a car park. Entrance just there, across the road, drive in, and that's going to be the car park for for our town uh, and then beyond it is a woodland which will be easier to get to once the car park's finished but it's, I've had many a walk down there it's absolutely beautiful and people camp down there in the summer often and um, it's down by the riverside and it's a lovely walk and there's the road down through the valley there and then this huge wall here because the the level is higher, the, the ground at the other side is about there. That's where the sticks with the bones are that's on in the previous film I did of the inside of the camp. And, uh, and we're walking down to the riverbank. Yeah, um, Georg told me that he, he watched every single one of these stones being put in place by a, a kind of digger that kind of picked them up and popped them in place building it one at a time, a huge digger with two sort of pincer things and he, he, he said he just wouldn't help himself he, that's that, it's the yellow house I think, just made out over there to the right of the red house and he's, he was in his window watching them he told me um, and there's a few people here who love watching the diggers and things like that, the machinery quite comical to see them getting all enthusiastic uh, <laughs> And, and the river is normally calm and crystal clear because it's been such wet weather lately that, that all the, the water is building up. I've known it be really wet before and I've never known the river to be this full either. And of course we're getting rock falls occasionally. At this time of year that's very rare. Some people have gla blamed global warming because the inside of the mountain is always below freezing. But um, if, if the heat, we have had a long heat hot patch so it's probably just that but it's like it's reached deeper than it ever has done before and, and it's um, heightened the temperature of rock in, deep inside which has caused, because the cost of the ice is thicker than water so once it thaws, so these gaps where it's cracked the rock and there's the village of Goodvang and I'm, I'm going to go walk down there as well I don't know what I'll be talking about when I walk down there but you can see it all the way, that's it really, just that one double sided street, that, that's your village, that's the actual good Wangen village. There, there are some, about as many houses again down the road, down on the main side of the main road that are counted as good Wangen as well. So then the people down there and the people in the farmhouses are kind of more like the citizens of um, good Wangen I would have thought. And can we make out that rock? Above, quite a big rock just above the grey house. That's a like site bigger than a house, and that's a rock fall. I'll be filming that when we're over there. I've watched um, little creatures running in and out here. They call them pole cats, but um, um, I don't know what you might call them weasels sort of type things, but they're slightly different to the ones we get in Britain. Uh, and we, we over the over the in the other valley beyond there, which is a bit. So they're not as steep as this, a bit more gentle. We were driving round in there last year and Angela said, stop, look, and go pull the car up and there was a, a pole cat with a, a dead lemming in its mouth. It looked like a lion carrying a deer. And it was really weird because we had the engine running, all the windows down, we're all looking out. And it, um, it came back out of its rock with its lemon in its mouth and looked, lemming, not lemon, and, and, and kind of looked at us as it keep on that lemming. And then, they're all part of the hotel really that 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 and then those are kind of like the motel area at the other side of there that you can drive in and there's a nice patio and I've stayed in them they're absolutely lovely and then I'll get a better view of those but those are the grass roofs are the most prestigious places to stay I often come wandering down here it's so, really sort of pleasant, you know. <coughs> you can walk a bit further afield, but uh, just um, between jobs and 
writing and eating and cooking and things like that. I'll just come for a short little stroll along here. Well, I did once anyway. That's a little joke. Uh, I'm coming behind the houses and behind the kitchens. And there's the bridge. It's a suspension bridge, so it wobbles a little bit as you move across it. I, um, when I was here for the God of War promotion, which was thick snow and midwinter, the whole of this river was frozen solid. And well, there was water running down the middle, but there was ice solid at both sides. And when you walked over the suspension bridge, the fact that it moved slightly sent a tremor into the ice, and the edges of the ice all along the bank would go cracking and breaking. It was weird. Uh, we're still working on this area here, obviously. Not supposed to look at that. I've seen that waterfall be all the colours of the rainbow, that one over there. It's not showing up on the film very well, but it's big and shiny. And that um, mountain over there once was all rainbow. It was as if somebody, God, had painted it. So the trees were red, orange, yellow. Or is it? Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Round old York. Great buildings I view. So the mountain itself was like a rainbow. Amazing to see. You see all sorts of things. That waterfall there, I saw it go come high. It's massive. It's the biggest free-falling waterfall in all of Europe. And it, I saw it come halfway down and then change its mind and, and turn back up. It must have been a freak wind. They were perfectly straight. And it turned back up and went into the sky and spiralled like a diamond. I know I'm a storyteller, but I'm not making it up. Uh, I'm coming to the end of this little section. I'm coming back down to the fjord. Uh, these walls are amazing. Of course, I'm showing you them at the end of the growing season, aren't they? They've been all flowers and beautiful. And to think, you know, the place is only two and a half years old and the walls are only about a year old. So already have it full of growth like that. It's fantastic. And all this area, see that fenced area and this here and all the way down to where that guy's taking pictures, when it's the market, all of that is full of tents and stalls. Down by the water side is um, Saladin's, um, where they sell all nuts and sweets and dried, healthy sort of sweet things, you know, and, and, and you can go and have a drink, coffee, etc, etc, cough, cough, cough. Uh, and then I'll just walk back to where I started off, and then that's um, in Mum 1, and this is Mum 2, winding up. Uh, 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 that one, you see seals in here, and uh, Tuffer took a picture of, a, I think it was an orca, um, somewhere up there, just recently. 